This is a video specifically about a question we got about what dads can do to just be closer with their kids after a divorce and what some basic steps out there for them just to become a better dad. Just read a book with your kids before bedtime. That's, that's a simple little tip. I felt that being a divorce lawyer for 15 years and seeing thousands and thousands of dads, I have a good amount of experience that I can kind of speak to some of these issues. And also I'm a dad myself. I have two kids. So I know what works and what doesn't. And we're all trying to figure this out. And all kids are going to be different. But there's some basic things that you can do to make the situation better for them and better for yourself. I mean, moms can watch it as well because there's there's tips in here as well for, for everybody just to become a better parent and having to deal with the other parent and also keep your relationship intact and then keep the relationship intact for the other side as well. So this is the time when I tell a lot of moms and I tell dads too, this is the time to step up to the plate. This is it. This is your, your kid's got one life. You got one life. Now you got to figure this out and you can go forward in a really great direction and you can save lots and lots of money for them in therapy dollars in the future. Or you can make life miserable for yourself and for your kids. Let's make it better than bleh. You know, let's do some basic things. Start it off with just read a book at night. I don't know how old your kids are. Yeah, my teenage daughter maybe doesn't necessarily want me to, you know, read to her at night. But for a long, long time, I mean, that was, you know, favorite part of a whole bedtime routine is reading books and with my son as well. And my wife does it with him and he loves it. You know, we take turns as a team, you know, and, you know, you can do that as well. Even if you're, you know, separated, just have a unified front um, and you can be on the same page a little bit. You know, hey, what books are you reading to him? Hey, you know, what, what are you and her doing, you know, for your bedtime routine? What's what's going on? You know, these are good, easy communication tactics that sometimes in certain situations, and I know, I'm going to get it in the comments that sometimes the other side is really hard to deal with, and that's true. I mean, absolutely, from both sides. But you can try to work with the other side to be on that same page. Now, let's say you can't. Let's say that's just not working, right, for whatever reason. Just read a book, 10 minutes every night. Make it a routine right before they go to bed. Jump on Amazon right now for like four bucks and you can get a good book at their age and, you know, whatever their reading level is or whatever, just, you know, reading to them. They, they love it. They love the time that you're spending with them. They remember that. So a harder one is giving them the space that they're going to need to understand what's going on in the divorce. Um, you're going to have to heal um, and you're going to have to go through the grieving process, but you don't want to let the issues between yourself and your former spouse or the baby's mother, you know, kind of interfere. Don't externalize what you should internalize. Your kids are not your therapist. Your kids are not there. They're, they're your children. They're children that need your help and your guidance and you're, you know, leading them down the right direction. And you can do that. It's, it's, they're, they need it. They need structure. Children crave structure. It makes them feel safe. It makes them feel secure. So the structure and, you know, being there for them. And that is also like what I said, don't externalize your own problems, your divorce issues, your issues with the baby's mother. Don't. You have to internalize it. You have to keep some of that in. And then that's who you turn to your, your therapist, your counselor, you know, if you have a new uh, significant other, you know, obviously that's somebody you can speak to, friends, family members, whomever, whatever it is that you're doing to get through this, this situation, but don't do it with the kids. So another tip is focusing on your relationship with them and depending on the age of the child, you know, just really being involved in their school. That's not hard. <laughs> um, it's, it's not, it's really not, you know, unless there's any thing in your divorce decree or your custody agreement that says you can't be involved. Most, most of the time people are, you know, be involved 
and there's nobody there that's going to spoon feed it for you. Reach out to the teachers, email them, you know, go to the parent teacher conferences, ask when they are, get the school calendar, get the packet at the beginning of the year, go to the orientation, do, do these things that are necessary to make sure you know what's going on. Look at their, their planner when they're coming home from school. You know, what is the homework? When are the quizzes? When are the tests? They have a science project. What is going on? So much of your children's life is school. You know, from the time they're in like VPK all the way through 12th grade, and then they're an adult. And you wanna be a part of their life. And you wanna be, you know, just, just ask them questions. You know, don't just do, what happened in school today? I mean, if you can't think of anything else to say, it's at least something. Don't just be like, okay, you know, food's in the fridge, figure it out. You know, you you want to build a relationship. You want to, you know, ask these probing questions. They even ask it of you and you may not even know they are. Um, and sometimes it can seem to some people, it seems almost annoying. But then when they look at the root of it, it's just the children just want to have an understanding of their parents' lives and what's going on in their lives and what's going on in their day. So keep foster that communication, foster that relationship. And it's easy if you know what's going on in their school, find out what their interests are. If you don't already know, this is the time to figure it out. What sport are they interested in? You know, if they're not interested in a sport, what academic you know subjects do they like? What is their favorite one? Science, math, are they... Do they excel in something? Do they like theater, drama, you know, computer coding, whatever? You yeah. come up with different ideas and, you know, look at YouTube videos with them on, on art and go to a museum. I, I can keep going on literally any subject and I think you can too. So just do that with yourself. Do that with your friends. Do that with your friends that have kids. Find things that are going on in the community, you, you know, different ways you can find out what's going on, obviously, is through social media and, you know, like Facebook and events and things like that. You can look at different types of groups that have events and family friendly. I know in the Tampa Bay area, there's a Tampa Bay uh, parenting magazine and they have a lot of different ideas and events that are going on, ideas that you can do with your kids. You just look at this stuff and you look at these calendars are like top 10 lists of things to do with kids outside. You know, just there you go. That's a good start. Have fun with your kids. Um, <laughs> you know, they're pretty cool little people. And again, there's so many different things that can be done with them and that will help you help them. I, I mean, that's the basis of it. They're going to struggle with different things because of hormones and growing up, you know, no matter what. I mean, they're going to struggle. There's going to be things that are going to be, you know, confusing for them. And then if there's a divorce or, you know, their parents are separated, that's going to be confusing for them as well. They're going to go through all this different stuff. But again, that's another tip is just being there for them. If you see that, you know, maybe they need to speak to a counselor, maybe they need to have somebody to talk to, you know, there you go. I mean, that's something that you want to make sure that you're there for them. So if they are completely closed off, they don't want to talk to anybody, they don't want to do anything, they don't, you know, that's that's something, you know, when there's a little bit more interventions that can be done, and that would be the help of somebody that, you know, a child psychologist that, that does this. This is like their job. This is what they're very good at. Um, I'm a divorce lawyer, so I'm just answering it from the perspective of also as a father that, you know, there's just really basic things you can do. This is not, you know, super complicated. It's hard because depending on, you know, how much your involvement was during the marriage and it, cause it differs and different people have different roles during marriages and there's, yeah, there's a lot of dads that, you know, they didn't have as integrative as role into some of the extracurricular activities of schooling, things like that. But now you got to step up because, you know, you, you just got to do it. That age, that time, it's that's it. That's your one time, you know, when they're 10 years old and on that time and you, that's it. It's the one time, you know, because next year they'll be a little bit older and, you know, and then soon they'll be adults. So cherish those moments. It's the journey, not the destination. So remembering each of these little points and when you can be on your phone, and we're all guilty of it, I mean, I'm running a, a law firm and a YouTube channel, so I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm guilty of it myself, of, uh, 
you know, being on my phone a lot, but I try to be as present as I can. You know, there's going to be arguments, there's going to be fights, there's going to be, you know, disagreements, there's going to be crying and screaming, and that's just yourself, <laughs> you know? So there's, there's going to be all of that. That's life. That's normal. So understanding that like a little disagreement or a little argument or somebody mad because they didn't get the, you know, the Hot Wheels, you know, car that they wanted at, you know, at Walmart or something like that. Um, they're kids, you know, they snap back quickly. So they can be a just absolute disaster one minute. And you're thinking, I just spent all this money on this trip. This is ridiculous. We're in the mountains and they don't care. And, da, da, da. and then, you know, 20 minutes later, you know, you just caught a fish with them and they think you're like, you know, the coolest person in the world because you just caught a fish. You know, I, I, it's just how life goes, you know, so don't sweat the small stuff and continue to, you know, enjoy these moments. It goes fast. And I, and I, I've, you know, doing this for 15 years now. I mean, I, I had clients that had little tiny babies, you, you know, when the case started and now they're, you know, graduating from high school. So, um, and then so many others through the years of, you know, dads and moms and everybody, but, you know, their kids are no longer kids. And now all you have are those experiences and hoping and praying that you left enough of an impact on your kids um, that they're going to, you know, now in turn just become awesome little people that are going to make a change in the world for the good they're going to find what they love to do or what um, what they're here for. And, you know, they're going to go after that and they're going to trip and they're going to fall and they're going to make mistakes. And you as their dad are going to be there to help them up. You're going to be there to, you know, be there for them. And that's pretty cool.